would it be possible to make a 4,000 horsepower bolt-in engine for the Nissan GTR? Hmm. Oh well, um, anyway, I'm Oscar from Elm Racing and it's time to give you guys an update on our Hell Engine. So, a quick refresher on our Hell Engine. That's a 60 degree even fire V6 engine that we're targeting as a bolt and replacement for the Nissan GTR. It's going to slot in below our Thor engine, so uh, much heavier, but uh, also uh, more affordable. So we've started the project by measuring the uh, bolt locations on the factory engine. So where all the uh, engine mount locations are, all the uh, bolt locations for the power steering pump, uh, air conditioning pump, alternator, uh, yeah, bolt patterns for the exhaust manifold, intake manifold, uh, all this stuff that I really like. Uh, important for, for getting engine bolt-in compatible, of course. Um, then, yeah, we did do a 3D scan of a complete engine. So that's not really required uh, for designing our engine at all. Uh, but we kind of want to see the external dimension, so if we need to move some parts around a little bit, we, we need to see that, okay, is there enough space or not, without like having to measure all of that separately, so we just like overlay all that in a CAD directly. So we have done that as sort of an insurance policy to save time in the future. Uh, yeah, we did a, a very detailed scan of the uh, oil pan, so that is to be able to clear the, the uh, cross member and the uh, steering rack and stuff like that so it needs to to fit that and we are probably looking at doing a dry sump system also so to have that uh, pump fit into the like uh, envelope of the overall uh, uh, original engine that's uh, of course really important also and yeah then we've been working on what have we been, we've been doing so uh, the block design of course obviously we started with that uh, fitting in all the different locations seeing okay what can we do with the with like uh, converting that to doing a, a full dry sump system and get all the uh, oil oil control correct on that and not just a filtering oil back through the crankcase and all kinds of uh, crazy stuff that the factory engine does. Uh, yeah, we did started working on the cylinder heads also. So the cylinder heads and the uh, block are very important to do very early so you can get, get those uh, figured out and how those uh, bolt up together if you need to do some custom uh, bolt solutions or stuff like that. So. So very important to get those done and also for the upgrades we're doing to see yeah, what kind of uh, dimensions we can get away with. So still uh, lots to work on there, but looking good. Uh, also the uh, crankshaft is a major, major uh, problem. So this is on a on a yeah, 60 degree V6 even fire engine. The crankshaft is an absolute nightmare. It's so, so bad on that, on that engine. So yeah, I would ideally want, of course, a 120 degree V6 or then an uneven fire V6, but that again creates problems for the drivetrain. So yeah, but yeah, we have found a, a solution for that to be able to uh, hit our sort of a uh, horsepower uh, target goal. So I'm very happy about the, uh, about the, yeah, the uh, progress we've been doing so far. So finally, time to talk a little bit about the specs. So this is what you guys have all been asking about. Uh, so we're currently looking at having all our uh, engine variant options being fully dry sump systems. So, th so possibly they're not being a wet sump, uh, like factory wet sump type, type engine option at all, which we think should be very doable. Um, then, yeah, we're looking at doing a street legal version, which it's kind of far out at, at this moment, so still a lot of work to do, but we are looking at getting a TUV approved uh, engine maybe done that would probably be limited to somewhere in this sort of thousand horsepower range range for that engine, but factory compatible, factory compatible of course, uh, and fully street legal in the EU, so that would be a huge, huge milestone because some countries in the EU, like in Finland, for instance, is extremely strict on what you can like legally do, do to your uh, to your engine and stuff so yeah that is a main thing that we're looking at uh, the displacement for that is a little bit of a question mark we're going to have to to see the uh, tuv approval stuff um, in more detail once we get further along with the design process but we're looking at probably around 4000 to uh, 4200 cc for that engine and uh, yeah somewhere in the thousand horsepower range so 1100 1500 horsepower something like that maybe 
Uh, that's still a question mark, but we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. And of course, for the Big Daddy, so Max Hill version is the uh, full out racing version that is designed for, for drag racing uh, with cooling, of course. So it will be possible to do like drag week events, stuff like this with, with the engine. Um, we're looking at doing, um, well, so first of all, uh, yeah, as I said earlier, we are doing a crankshaft design. So, so this is of course required, absolutely required to be able to push the horsepower much higher than what previous, uh, yeah, GTR compatible engines, engines are capable of doing so. So yeah, we're doing a custom crankshaft for that. It's a huge amount of work and it's, and unfortunately max hell version is going to be uh, more expensive than the TUV version but it's still going to be more affordable than, than Thor, of course. Uh, yeah, we're looking at probably 5,000 cc's for, the, for that engine. Uh, it's not set in stone yet, but it's looking really good for that, for the uh, bore and stroke we want to run on that engine, so really happy with that. Um, RPM-wise, we're sort of preliminarily trying to see, like, could we do 10,500 RPM on that engine? A bit of a question mark, but we'll have to see see how that goes when we're uh, further along the road. Uh, Crankshaft-wise, that looks good, but um, yeah, pistons, connecting rods, valve train, that's the question mark really with uh, this size of engine. That's going to be difficult, but I think it should be possible. And yeah, horsepower-wise, I mean, it is a full racing engine, so we're not going to guarantee any form of horsepower at all. Not even one horsepower. It's all down to, to the uh, team running the engine and the tuning and stuff like that. But let's just say I would be surprised if we wouldn't have at least one team pushing a, a engine number starting with a four. And I'm not talking about 400 horsepower. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we are going to have um, cylinder pressure sensors also, so that will help the teams manage that and, and try to keep the engine in one piece. But it's going to be like relatively stretched at 4,000, but we're, we're thinking it should be possible to do that. And especially with the cylinder pressure sensor, it should be um, sort of much more reliable to do that because the teams will be able to look at that data and uh, yeah, analyze that and we'll have yeah six cylinder pressure sensors for one for each cylinder. So yeah, I can check out, out all the uh, different like uh, options between the uh, cylinders and stuff like that and see how the uh, potential uh, mixture mismatch or if some injector is going bad or if there's some uh, problems with a uh, spark or, or yeah, a, a million different things basically can be seen directly from that. And uh, yeah, that is also something we have been uh, looking at a little bit, our XM system, of course, is capable of, of running in cylinder pressure sensors. That's not a problem, but we don't really want to be selling that to everyone because we don't want to write a really mass market or anything like that with the XM system. We just want to use that to develop our own stuff and like do things that are useful for others or like potentially sell some part of, the, of those to uh, other to be used in conjunction with other ECUs. So that's something we're looking into now is to do like a standalone box to take the in input from the cylinder pressure sensors and of course uh, some other sensors that are required. So crankshaft uh, position sensor, of course, and yeah, potentially some other sensors depending on, on how, how sort of a evolved of a anal an analysis system we want in that. And yeah, then run a canvas interface or analog interface to existing ECUs and just have a sort of interface there so, so we can communicate sort of important things like, okay, if we're seeing cylinder pressure problems, then, okay, we can communicate to the ECU like, hey, you need to pull five degrees of timing off of this cylinder, or you need to shut off this cylinder because, yeah, some injector-like load is going way down and we're getting huge knock levels or something like that. So, yeah, we've been in, in contact with um, with the ECU, like existing ECU manufacturers, and they do seem to be uh, very interested, and they do have... A, have uh, yeah, fast enough communications to be able to do that. So, so not real time, but to take like data from the uh, pressure trace from one cylinder and then apply a change for the next stroke. So, so once, so when the uh, same cylinder fires again on the next stroke, they will have that cha those changes applied. So that is actually a very good system and and um, yeah, pretty much as good as you can hope. So yeah, that's it for today's update, guys. Uh, if there are some other features or interesting 
sensor things or or customization things or stuff like that that you would be interested in then now is definitely the time to uh, to let us know about that so please leave comments comments in the uh, comment section uh, share this to other people that might have have some uh, special interests or requirements from a, a GTR a perspective or potential other use cases also because now is the time in the sort of design process where it's easy to like take uh, other considerations or like uh, take other requirements into consideration that we haven't necessarily thought of thought about ourselves so yeah uh, please leave comments on that and we'll see you guys next time <laughs> bye